Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, what we have here in front of you is our 6265 through 68 review sheet. And we're going to take our time working through it. Uh, make sure we're good. And probably going to make two videos out of this, but I'll make the first video of today, I'll make the second video for tomorrow, I get the idea. But here we go. Okay. Write the polynomial function of least degree that has real coefficients and zeros of the following. So for the first one, I have um, 3, 1 third, and 0. So what I've got here is I have x minus 3. Um, I have x minus 1 third. And then I just have x. Okay. Um, now, if we take a look at this, okay, we can go through it. We're just multiplying things out. We're foiling this out. So for the first part, if I foil this, x times x gives me x squared. x times negative one-third is negative one-third x. Uh, negative three times x is negative three x. And then negative three times negative one-third is plus one. We still have the x out there. Now, looking inside here, negative one-third minus three, okay, gives me x squared minus ten-third x. Plus one. I just converted this to negative nine over three x, and then since they're both the same sign, you add them negative ten over three, and all of that's being multiplied by x. Then all I can do is multiply this through x cubed minus ten third x squared plus x. Okay, and you're in good shape. Okay, that's all we're looking for. So. Okay, um, glancing over here, what we could do is, this is the more difficult one. The first part is fairly simple. X minus 2. That's just that 2 right there. And then I have to do X minus 5 plus 2i. And then X minus 5 minus 2i. Okay, this is the hard one, the last thing it knows. So I'm going to let the x minus 2 chill out front. And look how I'm going to do this. I'm going to change the order. Oops. Let's do minus. So I should always do mass pencil. And then x minus 5 plus 2i. Okay. All we're going to do is we're going to regroup the first binomial, x minus 5. Because now when I foil this out, it makes it way easier. All I'm doing is x minus 5 times x minus 5, which gives me x minus 5 squared. And then the beauty of this problem is, I mean, as long as you can remember that first step, when I do x minus 5 times positive 2i and x minus 5 times negative 2i, those outside and inside terms for foiling cancel out. So then I don't have to worry about the last. Negative 2i times positive 2i is minus 4i squared. I can FOIL this out, I get x squared minus 10x plus 25, this turns into plus 4, minus 10x plus 29, and now um, we're just going to distribute the x minus 2 across, I'm really sorry I don't have much room here, so this is just going multiplying across. Guys, if you have any questions on this stuff, please ask, because if you haven't noticed, it's a big part of the section. Um, x times x squared is x cubed, minus 10x squared, plus 29x. All I do is multiply the x all the way across. Now I'm going to multiply the negative 2 all the way across. Minus 2x squared, plus 20x, and then minus 58. So finally, combining my term, I only have 1x cubed. Um, this is minus 12x squared. 29 and 20 is 49x. And then minus 58. Okay. A little difficult. The only thing that's kind of a little bit scary about this one is that, you know, changing it around so you have x plus or x minus 5 and going from there. <clears throat> okay. Next part. This is one of the easiest things ever. Um, and I think we talked about this in class a little bit, but not a whole, whole lot. So I just want to make sure we're good. 
Below is the graph of a third degree polynomial function, completely blank. So they're saying that third degree, how many total answers could you possibly have? If it's third, that means three. Check out how many times it hits the x-axis. One, two, three. Every time it hits the x-axis, that's a real solution, a real root. So how many real roots does this problem have? Three. How many imaginary does it have? Well, these two numbers have to add up to the total amount. So since I already have three, this is just zero. So a different example, okay, different, completely different, would be if I said third degree, and I gave you this graph. Okay, so how many reals does this one have? One, it only hits once. How many imaginary? Well, you do three minus one and get two. See how simple it is? This imaginary answer always has to be even. It always has to be in pairs. You can never have an odd number here. So please keep that in mind. And you'll notice that too. It's, it's fairly simple. All right. Complete each blank below regarding the end behavior of blah, 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 blah. Now, we did end behavior in class. Okay. And I gave you the two parent functions to memorize or what or to remember. But you guys are allowed to use a graphing calculator. So let's take a look at this. If I type in my y equals 3x to the third plus 2x squared plus x plus 12. And I graph this. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Okay. So this is a cubic function, which means it goes like this. It goes up, and then it comes up. It curves and goes all the way up. So look what they're asking us here. As x goes to negative infinity, as I'm going back to the left on my x-axis, which way is my graph going? Is your graph going down or is it going up? Hopefully you guys are cool with seeing it goes down. Is that positive or negative infinity? Negative infinity. And as I go to the right, as so I'm going this way, is my graph going up or down? Going up. There's your positive infinity. That's super simple, okay? Just looking at graphs. Please, 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 pretty please. Pretty please. If you don't know this, like if you're having trouble with this, please ask. This is so easy. I can show it to you in 10 seconds and you'll get it. It's like one on one. Please don't sit there and just be like, oh, da, da, da. if you have trouble with this, just ask. Okay, I'll happily help you. All right, number four. Complete each question below. Here are some formulas that are going to help us out. If the width of a rectangle is tripled and the length is reduced by one half, what can be said about the area? All right, so we're talking about a rectangle's area. So right here. Normally, it's just length times the width. So this is our normal. This is our, here we go. It says, what if the width is tripled? So I'm going to make my area. I'm going to call my width x. But since it's being tripled, I'll call it 3x. So 3x. OK, and then it says the length is reduced by 1 half. Actually, I'm sorry. Start over the problem. Um, area equals 3w, because my width is triple, it's just 3w, 3 width. I'm making this more complicated to do. And my length is 1 half, so my length is 1 half L. Okay? So all I'm going to do is multiply these together. Guys, what's 3 times 1 half? 3 halves, length times width. So that's literally your answer. Your area is going to be multiplied. by three halves. It's a number out front. Really simple. Okay. I don't know why I was saying it to make it hard, more difficult than that. <clears throat> um, same idea for the second one. If the height and length of a rectangular box are quadrupled, what can be said about the volume of the box? Well, let's see here. Volume of a box is length times width times height. Okay, and I need to give that to you too. Box, volume, length times width times height. Okay. So, if I'm looking at this one, this is your normal one, length times width times height. And it says, if the height and length of a rectangular box are quadrupled. So, my length is quadruple means times 4, 4L. Width stays the same. And my height is quadrupled, it's 4H. Okay, let's clean this up now. What's 4 times 4? 16L times W times H. So, here's my original. Here's my new one. 
The only thing that changed is it was multiplied by 16. Okay? So you're just making a comparison about what happens to your overall volume if I do this one little tweak to it. Okay, part C. If the radius of a cylinder um, is one third its original size, what can we say about the volume of the cylinder? Okay. Sorry about that, I just want to check and make sure I had the right formula. The volume of our cylinder is pi r squared h. It was throwing me off because it said a here. This should be a b. So it should be this. My bad. All right, if the radius of a cylinder is one third original size, so I'm going back in here, I'm going pi, my radius I'm turning into one third r. Okay, and then here's my h. What can be said about the volume? Well, look what happens here. All I'm doing is I'm changing this to one third and I'm squaring it. So if I square that, I get one ninth r squared h. So if I pull that one ninth out front, all I'm doing is multiplying by one ninth. Okay. So I'm hoping that you guys see these problems aren't bad. You're just manipulating the equations in order to see how your your original turns out, how it changes. You could have also said divided by nine here, which probably makes more sense, but just to keep it uniform with the rest, to try not to confuse you guys. There we go. So that's the first page here. Okay. Um, we will be taking a look at the back then. So don't worry, I will get to that. It's just more practice with finding zeros and whatnot, syntax substitution. Um, but we're going to get plenty of practice with this. Okay, you guys are going to be experts at this before you take your test next Tuesday. And yeah, looking good. So as always, keep the good work and good luck. We're all counting on you.